Hello everyone, it's Luke here from 3D Tutor. In this video, I will show you how to get a nice looking sunset within Unreal Engine 5. So for starters, we're going to be using the Unreal Engine Sky environment. And for that, we'll either want to use a new level with a time of day, or the sky with everything sorted already. Or alternatively, if let's just say, you don't have the sky for your own setup level. We can always create it ourselves by going to the Windows tab, Environment Light Mixer, which will give us this sort of a window. And within it, we'll want to create a skylight, create sky atmospheric light, then create sky atmosphere, and finally create volumetric cloud. The basic sky system will be set up within the Unreal Engine tab but we need to fix cer certain issues so for example right now it's completely pitch black and that is because we need to change some settings within direction light so for that we'll want to make sure we go to normal and advanced we get ourselves all the detailed settings within our direction light and then afterwards we'll want to untick fx the world and then tick it again make sure it refreshes the setting and repositions the sunlight. Then afterwards, we'll want to select back onto the view. So by simply right clicking on it, we can do so. And then we can click and hold control and L to get ourselves a gizmo to control the lighting. So by positioning our light just right next to the horizon like so, we already get ourselves a nicely dimmed sky, but we need to make some further changes to it. We can make some changes to the sunlight itself. So now if we were to change the source angle and increase it to the max, our sun is going to get much larger. I'll just uh, put the sun just a little bit more. It'll be more visible like so. So by changing the source angle, right away we get ourselves a nice sunset, just like that. Then afterwards, we'll want to enable a bloom effect. We get ourselves some nice rays on the horizon. So if we were to search for bloom or light shaft, we'll be able to select this button over here. With this enabled, right away, we'll get the sort of result. Naturally, we'll want to change some settings for it. So for example, if we were to change the bloom brightness, max brightness, we'll get some interesting results coming out of it. So right now, I reckon I'd be using a value of 20, since that'll give you a bare minimum, but it'll still add to the sunset, which will make it look extra nice. We'll want to readjust the way this brightness is, because currently our scene can be a little bit dark, especially if you're looking from a certain angle. So we'll be using exposure to fix that. And for that, we'll need to create ourselves a post-process volume. And before changing any detail, we'll want to enable the infinity bound. So this one over here within the post-process, this will make sure that the settings that will change is going to affect the entire world instead of just affecting this tiny square like so with this enabled, we can now make some changes to the exposure. Let's go ahead and search within the search bar, the exposure. Then we'll want to firstly enable the minimum and maximum brightness, because what this one does is it affects the exposure based on the lighting to simulate the way our eyes adjust towards the light. So if we were to set our camera within a darker room, for example, our exposure would increase which would make it look a little bit brighter for an environment. However, in this case, since we are having the sun directly, since we're having a light source directly from one angle, we'll be having some issues with this kind of a setting, since our environment is going to look completely different based on the way we're setting up our camera. So for that, right now, we're going to be setting both of them to a value of one, like so which will make sure that it doesn't change. 
of them stays at the same value. However, because of it, we're going to get ourselves right away a dark end up scene, since our light source produces very little light because of the way it's set up. But before changing the exposure, we're going to make use out of the indirect lighting that we get from the environment. So if we were to use the skylight settings and increase the intensity by changing the skylight intensity to two. So before it's going to be like this and afterwards it's going to increase it just a little bit. But that is more than enough for us. I recommend you not overdoing it. Otherwise it's going to look a little bit washed out for the scene. So keeping it at two will do the trick. And afterwards we can go back onto our post-process volume and for the exposure we can use a value of two as well which will create a nice lighting for the scene you can even increase this value a little bit more let's set it to three actually it'll give us a nice lighting like so now one thing that we can also do is make the coloring of the sky a little bit more artistic let's say since by default it tries to simulate the real world atmosphere and the way it absorbs the light we'll want to go on to the sky atmosphere settings so within the sky atmosphere settings we'll need to find ourselves we'll need to find a setting that's called atmosphere absorption and we don't really need to even change the absorption color we can simply change the scale for it by simply clicking and holding it to drag the intensity for the color. We can change the amount it absorbs of the green color, which in turn will give us this sort of result. Once we're done with the settings, we can go ahead and close it down. One thing that we can also do to improve the scene is enable the, is enable the fog system. So for that, We'll want to get ourselves a height exponential fog. Go ahead and drag it down. Right away, it's going to look quite poorly, but we're not going to be using it as a default one. And it said we'll want to be making sure it uses volumetric fog instead. So for that, we'll want to get ourselves onto the top section tabs. In the edit tab, we'll want to find project settings. Now within the project settings, we can search for fog and we'll want to make sure that the support sky atmosphere affecting height fog is enabled. With this enabled, you'll have to restart your project. And after it's done, we'll have to make sure some of the values are down. So within the fox in scattering, we'll have to make sure it's set to black as well as the directional and scattering is set to black as well. This will make sure that it doesn't use the previous values directly as a volumetric fog. It was simply overlaying and multiplying the color, which is not what we want to do. We want to have the fog to inherit the color values from the sky. We remove those unnecessary settings. And afterwards, we can go ahead and enable the volumetric fog, which right now will only show us as barely lighten up the environment. Since in this scene, there's nothing in a distance. However, we were to put some mountains in a distance, the result would be much easier to notice. So right now, if we were to disable it, you can clearly see how it gives us the depth as well as some additional lighting. So just like that, by simply tweaking a couple of settings, we're able to get some really nice sunsets within Unreal Engine 5. So that's it guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out our other 3D goods, such as online courses, 3D assets, and PBR textures. All the links can be found in the description down below. Thanks for watching.